So setting the foundation, why have we created Nimble Cloud Volumes and why is it a first? So it's really this idea, and we're using actually a Forrester framework here to describe these waves or stages of applications moving to the cloud. And it's pretty simple, right? The current, currently most applications in the cloud are designed to highly leverage the native cloud services. They're mostly web, mobile, content, data serving applications. They work really well with native cloud services and object storage. Similarly, with this sort of second stage of business intelligence and analytics apps, there are lots of fantastic cloud services that work really well with them and they, they, they lend themselves well for deployments in the cloud. What's really interesting, and this is the one that we hear a lot from our customers and, and enterprise customers, is kind of this third stage. And this is this idea of taking standard enterprise applications, applications like SQL and Oracle and SAP that have underlying databases and lots of customized, um, customized capabilities on top of them that the customer maybe, have, maybe has developed for many years. And customers want to be able to move them to the cloud without rewriting them to fit in with the confines of the cloud and the cloud services. So in this sense, there's kind of a, a gap or a chasm because in order to do that, they place very stringent requirements on the underlying storage, pieces that you don't get natively with cloud block storage. So what are, what are the challenges with cloud block storage that prevent some of these apps going to the cloud? And there are really three things that we, we pulled out from talking to customers. About 15 months ago, we started the process and we started in really deeply interviewing a big base of customers to understand what they wanted to do with the cloud and what were the limitations with the public cloud because we had this sort of feeling that there was this gap. And what it came down to was the first one comes under this bucket of, I guess, calling it enterprise grade, but probably two really key characteristics. The first is what we, what's called durability. If you look at native EBS or Azure um, disk volumes, they have an annual failure rate in the range of 0.1 to 0.2% where failure equals loss of data. So that says somewhere between one in 500 and one in 1,000 times, you will lose data on native cloud block storage as per their spec, okay? You can protect it, but you can't get back the data that's actually lost between protection points and when those volumes go down. So they're not enterprise grade from a durability perspective. The other piece is while Native cloud store, block storage has things like rudimentary snapshots. Typically, they'll copy them to an object storage repository. They're not the same as on-prem snapshots that are instant, high performance, take thousands of them and do it very efficiently. And they don't have some of the data services like zero copy clones. So there's a gap. The second area is this idea of cloud locking. It's quite hard to get data to the cloud. It's even harder to get it out because you pay egress charges and it's difficult to move between clouds. And the third one's an interesting one. We call it the, the black box penalty of the cloud, and it's a two-edged sword. The cloud, the, the best part about the cloud is it's a black box. You don't manage the underlying infrastructure. You don't want to manage the underlying infrastructure. On the other hand, what you pay for is you don't have visibility into what's going on, and that shows itself in two areas. There are problems when you, you still have problems when you deploy applications in the cloud. The problems don't, in immediately and automatically go away. And when you have problems, sometimes it can be very difficult to troubleshoot what's really going on. The second thing is you don't really have the visibility to optimize the cost and data placement and utilization because a lot of it's kind of masked by this idea of it is just a big black box. So if you look, there are hundreds of companies trying to build tools to give you better visibility into the public cloud services to try and optimize some of this. So we looked at these three areas and really with the goal of saying, how could we innovate and deliver something that could start to address them? And what did we do? So Nimble Cloud Volumes, as I said, it was launched a week and a half ago. We've been working on this for about 15 months. And essentially it's an enterprise grade block storage service for Amazon AWS and Microsoft Azure. What does that mean? We've built our own cloud with our own technology 
and we locate it in data centers that are a close proximity to the public cloud data centers. Okay, to start to address the question that was asked before. The idea is we need to be at low latency proximity, but we do it in a way where we're providing it not as a, an array in the cloud or an entity that you manage and, and build as an on-prem array, but genuinely as a block volume storage service. So the idea is it's as easy to use as the native cloud storage. It's as easy to provision us as it is to provision a native EBS volume or an Azure virtual disk. And you'll see a demo in a moment, but you're getting all the benefits that I talked about. So it's effectively this Equinox kind of solution where you're close to the cloud and directly connected to Azure and AWS. Right, so, so I'll sort of just set the scene and I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm avoiding the question. In the same way as under the covers, we all know that Amazon uses Intel servers and SSDs and everything, we're, but yet they don't disclose how they do it or what they do. So we're using nimble technology, we're locating it at places that allow us to have very good connectivity. There are lots of data centers around the world in different geographies. I'd be very that. careful when I said it, yep. because, because you're, you're, you're not in the Amazon data center, you're in a data center adjacent, it, and different, uh, e di different data centers have different latencies to the EC2 and the Azure Cloud. Right. Whereas Amazon storage is in there with a very much lower latency than you can promise. I mean, um, do you, do you, are you in every cloud? Are you in specific, are you in every data center near? No, uh, or no. So, we'll, we'll, or? so currently we're in two locations, east and west US. And what you'll see is there are always hubs of data centers at close proximity to where Amazon and Microsoft place their data centers. And what you'll see is the latency that we get between cloud compute, so between an EC2 instance or an Azure virtual machine and our cloud volumes is, it's always as good or better than the best latency you get with the native EBS. So it's kind of interesting, so, so that's the kind of latency that we're driving. And in some cases, it may be the other end of the same data center. So there are plenty of locations you can put. Yeah, with some you, of these Cloud Connect locations. Some of them are good. You're literally talking about across the street with Boku dark fiber underneath. Yeah. But there are uh, others that are 10 or 20. Yeah, but you know, if you, if you pick but, well the right. network latency. You don't get to pick. Oh no, we do get no, to pick. No, 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 they get to pick. Right, they, right but, but we're gonna, this is our, our value the, add, right? We need to be <sighs> at least as good, if not better latency, and we have to offer a whole lot more. And really, so what we're trying to do, we're not trying to say, uh, there are plenty of, things where EBS is just better for the customer in every respect, or Azure you know, disk volumes. We're saying for someone that wants these enterprise grade capabilities, they want the multi-cloud, they want some of the things that we're bringing by layering InfoSight into this, this is a great solution. But the key thing that sets this apart is it's a true service. We're not placing infrastructure that the customer has to touch or manage. Yeah. They literally provision through APIs or a portal and then they get but you're, you're, you're But you're, what you're providing is a volume and you're providing, I guess, a multi-tenant. You have lots of customers in one physical right. that you may have. Right. Okay. And just the same, same as what the native cloud vendors are doing. So we built this as a true, as a service end to end. You'll, you'll see a lot of it will sort of show itself when you see the demo. Um, so really, what are we offering? And this is easy, right? So enterprise grade, millions of times more durability. So who owns the um, physical hardware? Is that nimble owned hardware or is it customer owned hardware? They're, it's our cloud. So we, yeah. we, if the customer buys this, they pay their 10 cents per gig per month and that's all that they ever see and it, it, the rest is ours, it's our cloud. Um, so okay, so enterprise grade, we have the, obviously our rich set of snapshots, zero copy clones, you only pay for the change data, you don't pay for full copies as you would natively. Multi-host access is actually becoming a really interesting one. So the, the, the biggest use case, we have about 50 beta customers at various stages of the cycle, actually 40% of them are large enterprises in what we call the global 5,000. Uh, the biggest use case is actually SQL clustering where you need to have multi multi-host access to the same data. So we support that. We can grow and shrink volumes and so on very easily. So enterprise data services, enterprise grade durability and reliability, mobility, we can replicate natively between on-prem and the cloud and back again and then move those data sets between clouds, so very easy mobility. 
And then this is an area that you'll see grow very rapidly. We've just gotten started at extending InfoSight into the public cloud to give you visibility into the data sets to opt help you optimize data placement, to help you predict and prevent problems um, between the cloud compute and the storage. So, yes, yeah, actually, we're going to stop the presentation in a moment. Um, so, with that sort of to set the scenes, what I'm going to do is call on Sandeep, and he's going to come up here and, and run through a demo. I'll just give you the prelude to that. The notion is as easy to use as enterprise, as native cloud block storage, except that it's not the native one, it's using Nimble Cloud Volume. So you essentially log in, you select your capacity and your IOPS, click Next. The volume's available now to be attached to Amazon or Microsoft Clouds. And then from a pricing perspective, sorry, you pick which cloud and then you select how many IOPS and capacity. And you'll see this in real life in a moment. Starts at 10 cents per gig per month. It's currently going through a beta cycle. I mentioned that just before. The next phase is we roll into what's called customer preview. That'll happen by the end of April. Customer preview for us, just like most cloud services, we're defining as ready for production customer data. However, there'll be very fast iteration of features being added and we're already starting to roll out some of those in the beta cycle that the customer will see each time they log into the portal or new APIs will come online or whatever it is, it'll iterate very quickly. And then we're doing a, really a global rollout throughout the rest of this calendar year. So we start off with east and west locations in the US, we'll add more locations across the US and we'll add locations in Europe and in Asia. What's the plan for the European data centers? You're going to start from UK, presumably? So we, we haven't said yet. I mean, you, we're going to start where the customer base is, and UK would be a pretty good guess, but we're, <laughs> Sorry. we're not. Then, no, I mean, think it's in the Netherlands. You know, genuinely. <laughs> you, you're saying you, Europe. Europe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's well, not the UK, UK and Europe. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. oh man. <laughs> We are still. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we can't say the Eurozone either or anything like that. But um, the yes. other side of the Atlantic. Well, you know, Germany's yeah. going to be in German, right? In Germany, right? So they can't get the country. <laughs> We've had strong customer interest from the places you would expect across the world, is how I will say it. But we're not actually, we're genuinely not sure what the exact order will be. It's all the planning's now taking place. So, as I said, with that, I'm going to roll over to Sandeep and you'll see a demo. But please, thanks for all the questions. Thank you.